you're in Hawaii, right? Yes, I'm in Maui. Uh, that's awesome. I had we, we my wife and I had considered going uh, to Hawaii for our honeymoon, but we ultimately ended up deciding somewhere else. But okay, where do yeah, you go? It's on, it's on our bucket list. We went to uh, Dominican Republic. Okay, okay, I'm planning mine right now, so I'm still. We haven't picked our place yet. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. When did you get married? Well, I'm gonna get married in November. Oh, in November, that's so exciting! Congratulations. Thank you. That's Very awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, uh, I just to give you kind of an idea of what we're doing here. Um, uh, I run a small production company with my wife uh, called OD Films, and we are looking to try and start putting out some more content. Mm -hmm. And we feel that as a video production company, maybe sometimes other topics we shouldn't talk about. And so we thought it'd be a good idea to talk to professionals like yourself who really, you know, breathe marketing and understand this uh, and thought maybe you could have some answers to questions that we've encountered as a small business and what our clients have encountered. Um, Cause as you know, I'm sure online, there is a lot of information out there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So it can get a little confusing. And so I, sent you the questions over um and just to kind of get things started i'd love for you to tell us your name uh what you do and more importantly where people can find you yeah so my name is adele brianne and i'm based in my hawaii you can find me at my website amazingandhelpful.com i'm also on youtube and instagram those are kind of the main places i hang out a little bit of facebook um but mostly my website is great yeah. awesome thank you so much uh, so the first question I have is when it comes to a small business having an online presence, how important is it that they not only have a website, but also have, uh, you know, active social media accounts? Yeah, so there's a lot of different opinions here. So I am definitely a lover of websites. I have found my own website to be incredibly valuable for my business over the last 20 years. And Ultimately, I think there's still a lot of people who are judging you based on, do you have a website? Do you have a presence? Does it look professional? Does it load quickly? Does it really do its job? You know, it's kind of like when we think of like the old business card, your website really is in a sense, your business card that gives a lot more to a potential customer, right? But ultimately it's who you are and what you do and how to reach you. That's what a business card was. So, okay. you know, ultimately your website can do that. And then from there, you know, if you have great SEO and people are finding you through Google, that's excellent and an amazing strategy. But let's say you're not there yet or your SEO is just getting started or whatnot. Social media is an awesome place to hang out because your clients and potential clients are pretty likely to be somewhere on social media. So you can, you know, there's different ways to kind of figure out. You can work with an expert. You can do research. You can listen to podcasts to kind of figure out where are my clients hanging out? Are they hanging out on Instagram? looking at pictures, looking at videos, participating in lives. Are they on Facebook? Are they in Facebook groups? Are they loving TikTok? You know, are they loving Pinterest? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they cruising YouTube every day? Those are kind of the main um, ones that I utilize and work with in my, in my own industry with my clients. And there's sort of some more popular ones we work with specifically. But ultimately, if your clients don't know your website exists yet and they can't find you through Google, if you're spending time on Instagram using hashtags that ultimately your clients are looking at and looking at pictures, there is an opportunity to connect there. And so there's an opportunity where it's not instantaneous, but once you have them following you or you're following them, then you have that opportunity to basically start engaging and showing them who you are, how they can trust you, how they can reach you. And it really does work. I get inquiries through Instagram and SEO. So this combination effect of I can do a lot more on Instagram where people are hanging out and then bring them to my website where there's no other competition or distractions. And then I can say, Hey, is this the problem you're having? I think I can help you solve it. And if that's the right solution for them, then it's very likely they're going to hit that contact me button, fill out a little form so that I can make sure we're a good fit. And then we go through that process. So. Yeah, I really love the way. No, I love that. I thought that was a really, really good explanation as to almost using it as like a vessel to get them to your website. Um, I think you also just did a really good job of kind of breaking down the the pros and cons to almost having just one and then the other ways you could be utilizing these other types of platforms. So I thought that was really great. So thank you so much. Um, I guess the next the next natural question is, 
what kind of content should, you know, small businesses and really just businesses, I guess, medium size, uh, what should they be sharing? Like when it comes to the types of content, I know you could do behind the scenes. I know you could do like, there's all these different types of options. So I guess just where, where would, what would you recommend? Yeah. So I have to give credit where credit's due. So I've been working with an incredible coach for the last year, Ellen Yen. So I want to give her credit for some of this strategy. Ultimately, she didn't create the concept of evergreen, but we know literally the concept of evergreen from the plant world is your tree is evergreen. It's always green. It's you don't have to replant every season. So this is a beautiful concept in terms of content where we call it evergreen content. And evergreen means no matter what time of the year, no matter what year, it's still viable and relevant. So for example, I'm a website designer. So if I put some content up there that describes that I'm a website designer, that's evergreen. It's never, it's really never shifting that I'm a website designer. Now it might be that I have an offer that's timely that you can only get this week. That is not evergreen. It's just, it's, you know, it's here, it's gone. The idea with content is what is the important messaging you need to put out there that over time, no matter what potential client sees it, they go, okay, I immediately know that they offer this. This makes sense to me. If I need this service, I know I could go to them. So there's kind of the idea of educating your potentials on what do you really offer? Because sometimes it's even confusing. Like, first of all, many of us offer more than one service. Like I offer probably, you know, technically like <laughs> yeah. 40 services. So if someone lands on my Instagram, and they see pictures of my dog and pictures of Maui and all this other stuff. Can they in a split second tell that I'm a copywriter? Can they tell that I'm a WordPress designer? Can they tell? So there's the idea of evergreen content where I'm guiding my clients on this idea of in a split second, when they land with some, some visual stuff and some copywriting, can your potential client tell what you offer so that right away they know, oh yeah, I need that. Or I don't need that because you actually want to speak directly to your customer and you kind of also want to let the non-customers slough off. So if someone wants a Wix website, I want them to know that I do WordPress and I don't want them on my feed because they should go find a Wix person. So it's really beautiful, this idea of creating evergreen content so that right away people can see what you do and then you can mix it up with reels and some, some more fun stuff to kind of get them to just know your personality, what's going on with you because ultimately there's this concept of they know you, they like you, they trust you, which is really the foundation of any relationship but in the world of business and marketing strangers come to you through social media and they don't know you do they like you do they trust you so your job through your content is to create those warm feelings and also to immediately deliver that information of hey i could help you solve a problem i do these skills so that's kind of where i'm at with content is i really think that that concept of evergreen is a great strategy and then you do have to keep it fresh you do have to put new stuff out there but ultimately if your feed in a split second tells people what you do, you don't have to post every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a very controversial opinion. Yeah. <laughs> in this industry, it all because I've heard everything from you you need to post three times a day to At this time you know, when your people yeah. are most active and yeah, there's a and lot that's of not info sustainable about that. for people. I mean, no, we that's how you burn out. VAs. Not everyone wants to learn how to use an AI bot, you know. So ultimately, what I've really learned too is if you're engaging through stories and you're putting your story content in there, I'm, I'm not being specific mostly to Instagram, but they go through Facebook. Sure, yeah. When people are seeing your stories, that's kind of putting them at the top of your feed. So then when they see your story, they click through and then they land on your grid. So if your grid is evergreen, it doesn't matter if I posted four weeks ago, if they can still tell right away that I can solve their problem and they got there through my story, I really just need to push stuff to my stories every day. So that's a little bit of a strategy there too, right? So you're like, it's... Yeah, it's stuff. it's all it's almost <laughs> just yeah, it's almost just being active is you know doesn't necessarily mean you have to be posting consistently like constantly. Uh it's really the active term is engaging in comments, engaging in stories and things like yeah. that. Yeah. And and there's this idea of like so for example, I live in Maui, Hawaii. I love serving my local businesses. So I follow every business that I would like to work for in the future. And I engage with them and I come with them and I'm not spamming their DMs, asking them to hire me. 
I'm just another part of the community that's supporting what they're doing. Well, eventually if they need my help and I'm on their feed and they're seeing my stories and I've just been this positive bubbly person. And also I happen to live in a, a because it's an Island. We really like to support local here, which again, I really encourage business owners out there, use Google, use your local network, like support clients in your area. If that's works for your business, you know, like it's, it's sometimes harder to, reach across the vast internet across state lines to get clients from all these other states when you probably have strength in knowing the city you live in the state you live in the region you live in the things affecting your clientele in your region for many businesses serving your local clientele is a strategy that people don't even think of they're trying to get clients all over because it's a global world but ultimately you can create great impact in your own community and that is you'll get great word of mouth referrals from that, which a lot of businesses at the end of the day, it is word of mouth. So that even when it's a customer likes your Instagram and follows you and shares your content, that's word of mouth in a sense. They're sharing it with their network saying, Hey, this is cool. I like this. I support this. That's the same thing as me saying to my girlfriend over dinner, I got this great haircut. You should check out Susie's salon. So I feel like it all kind of comes full circle in a way. Yeah, you know, it definitely does. Uh, that Yeah, I really appreciate the answer. That was great. Um, awesome. I guess then the next big uh, kind of question is the specific content that you're posting, uh, the captions. What are some general things you should keep in mind when you're writing captions? Because you can very easily just kind of write something silly and not pay attention to it. But I also think that uh, from what I understand, there's there's a bit of an opportunity there that you could really take advantage of by using certain keywords, maybe things like that. So I'm really curious what your take is on that. Yeah. So I think too, it's a little bit dependent on the platform, but certainly like YouTube is a search engine and every keyword, every description in your video description is searchable. So YouTube is incredibly valuable for the description you're putting in there, um, for what you're putting in there. I trying to think I don't know if there's a limit but you could you have a pretty good amount of space in YouTube with Instagram and Facebook as well you have a real opportunity to do storytelling storytelling is a form of advertising it's very powerful especially nowadays where there is so much clutter and there's so much noise and so much messaging coming through that when someone sees a picture that kind of is the grab like so you got to have that high quality image and then with your copy and your little caption you really have this opportunity to bring them in. And I personally, for me, there's a sweet spot of, I can do a little bit of a lengthy caption, but I'll find that if people do these crazy, crazy novel captions, like on Facebook, even if I was interested, I usually won't read the whole thing. So I personally am not a fan of the novel. I mean, I guess it probably works for some people. That's why they do it. But for me, I just, I won't read it all. So I'm a big fan of like short clip videos. And then like your video has like sort of an important message. And then you reiterate that in your caption because video is so powerful now. So like even where we used to read the caption, now people, it's just so much better to do a reel or do a video and have yeah. them there. But ultimately in terms of keywords, you know, you have an opportunity to connect in that way. So we've always been people who read newspapers and who read magazines. And so there is still, I think a great opportunity to connect with your potential client by being thoughtful in your writing. And I personally am a little bit of a mix of like, I do some like very strategic, like, okay, I'm really excited to share this specific thing. And then there are other times when I'll, I'll use that sort of feminine essence, that intuition and be like, you know what, I'm feeling inspired. I'm just going to write stream of conscious today and talk about what's going on. So I'm a little bit not so by the book and I won't be real strict with my clients and I won't be like, you have to do this. It has to be this way. I'll be a little bit more like, Hey, we definitely got to get some of this release. Here's some strategy. Your clients need to know this. And you know, if something, you know, something inspires you and you want to talk about it, I think you should. I think that yeah. that is part of developing your authentic voice. And that really does connect with people. Yeah, I, I think to speak to kind of like the first half, it, it really is just knowing your audience. You need to know who you're writing for. You need to know uh, what you're creating and who you're creating it for. I, I think it's just so important. And I guess a, a little bit of a follow up question is how important is it to be focused when you're creating these posts? Because I've I've heard that you can put out too broad of content. You could be trying to target too many people. And then, you know, instead, you should be kind of doing the opposite. 
Yeah. So um, she's pretty big in the industry, Marie Forleo. So she's the one who said this. I'd have to you know, quote her, but, and she probably didn't originally say it, but she was saying, um, let me see if I say this right. If you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. So that's the idea too, of like the niching or niching down. And ultimately I, the idea is that I, as an individual have very specific needs. I don't have broad needs. I have specific needs. So if someone wants to help me solve a problem and my problem is dieting or yoga or whatever, they have to speak very specifically. So if they say, Hey, do you want more fitness in your life? I'm like, not really interested, but if they're like, Hey, do you want to wake up every day excited about, you know, excited about your day? Do you want to wake up every day um so excited to do this thing or do you like like basically the idea like they ha- you have to speak to what is going Their on for your person. so yeah. you have to do that research so ultimately like every individual's got so much going on so if you're a health coach you can't just speak to everyone who has health issues you have to be like oh i specifically help people relieve low back pain which helps them have better posture which enables them to have more b- mobility and ultimately they physically feel better and it helps them with depression and their lives get better <laughs> you know like it's this yeah. whole like so ultimately you know you have to know with laser sharp accuracy who you're really going for and what's great is that even if your ideal client is me a 41 year old woman who needs you know, who has high cholesterol whatever you know to know that messaging versus you know you don't know exactly what's going on you're like well i could help everybody i mean everybody needs fitness well not everybody needs fitness someone who's already got a gym and is doing all right doesn't so you kind of really have to do that market research i would say that's honestly actually sort of a side tangent but the number one thing that i could help people with is just encouraging them to get to know their customers better i would say no matter what's going on even with the mindset work we're doing that the number one problem I see with clients and I, and I help clients find clients. Like I help clients grow their business and bring more you know customers through the door. So ultimately that's really been so crystal crystal clear is that people, everyone's like so excited about their ideas and their business. They don't even know what their customer wants or needs, or they're so disconnected. So it's, it's actually so exciting for me and my, my world right now to just really like, kind of like, get through all the clutter and then say to people, Hey, you know what? It's actually going to be really fun and exciting. We're just going to talk to people. We're going to talk to your customers. We're going to talk to people who could be your customers. And then they're going to use their words to tell us exactly what's going on. And those words are the most powerful words we could use in your marketing and your messaging. Anything we brainstorm is not going to be as effective as what comes out of your customer's mouth. So that's kind of like the golden nugget I could probably give, you know, an audience is we really need to understand our customer. And that's just going back to what you're saying about the content is if I don't know that ultimately what my client wants is a done for you service versus what my client wants is to do it herself, they have vastly different needs. So I have to know who I'm speaking to, even if I have an offering for both. Well, and you can almost, uh, from what I understand, you can really hurt yourself too by, by putting too broad of a reach out there, because then it's like, you're getting in front of somebody who you're not getting in front of the right eyeballs. And so then you're just going to keep getting swiped and not served. Yeah. So for me, let's say ultimately like two years ago, I was thinking, Oh, I want to serve done. I want to serve DIYers. People who are building their own websites. Well, ultimately I learned that wasn't my audience. So if I kept, if I just continued putting out more and more content that was just like, Hey, here's how to build your own WordPress site. And here's how to do your own SL. And here's how to do like, I was not going to make any money or get any leads because actually the clients who come to me want done for you services. They want me to do the work. So the more I educate them on doing it themselves, (laughs) that's not, so it's, so it is, you know, it's really interesting that, you know, Sometimes we're so excited and passionate. We're putting content out there and we're doing all the things and we don't realize like oh, we're speaking to the wrong people or we don't know who we're speaking to. So it's yeah. so important really to, I always say people are in such a rush. We're on such a rush to pay the bills and make money and <laughs> be successful. And I was like, we got to slow down. <laughs> and even for me, that's always a challenge. <laughs> no, I totally understand. Um, 
That's awesome. Uh, I guess then the obvious next question then is when it comes to hashtags, what what are some general guidelines? I, and you know, you, you can use hashtags that are too broad and then you're not getting served enough because you're just a drop in the bucket. I mean, what, what do you do in that circumstance? Yeah, so this is interesting. I think I, I will say I'm not an expert on hashtags, but I've done some education. I do my own dabbling. I think in a sense, that's a good word, dabbling. You're, you, you as a business owner, if you are doing your own marketing, you ultimately are your own researcher. So you have to learn a little bit about the hashtags by listening to some podcasts, doing a little research. There's plenty of articles out there. So they'll explain to you like what you just said is like, so in the algorithm, if I'm using a hashtag that like has a billion pictures in it, that's going through so fast that no one's ever going to see the thing that you tagged. So there's kind of a sweet spot, right? And there's, you know, people have different ideas, but like if there's several thousand of a tag, that's pretty good. Like here in Maui, we're a small community, so we can actually utilize smaller hashtags that are at least over a thousand, I would say. A thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, under 50,000 is kind of a nice sweet spot. But even then, as you get bigger into the ones that have several hundred thousand up in the millions, they're popular, they're using them, people are going through them. So there's value because they're popular, but if they get too big, they go so quickly. So it's kind of this thing where, I mean, conceptually, some people don't even understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> sure, yeah, sure. So, so what we're saying is that, you know, the more popular your hashtag is, so if your hashtag was just, you know, baby food and there's 7 billion baby food pictures out there and I'm a baby food brand and I want people to find my baby food they might not find it that way but let's say um I'm an organic baby food and organic baby food is more niche and not everyone's searching for organic baby food but people who buy organic baby food are searching for organic baby food so that's a really nice way where it's similar to the niching down where you have to get a little more focused with your hashtags and understanding um, you know, so here in Maui, almost everything is going to be tagged with the geographic area and that's always going to be strong for you. So if you're in Portland, Oregon and you're a Portland web designer, you're going to do Portland web design, but actually your clients are Portland business owners. So they're putting Portland business or Portland small business or small business Saturday or things like that. So it does take, I would say a little bit of time to research, understand it's kind of an education point of started getting into this idea of what hashtags are i mean what 10 years ago did they even exist <laughs> yeah, well, exactly yeah, yeah. I, from everything i've uh read and understood it's just it's very experimental and i think there's a level of patience you have to have with with social media it's not a short game it's a it's a really it's a long game i agree i agree and and that's really the truth of your business and again like especially when you're a startup it's the first two years of your business you're so excited you don't realize you just got in a tiny rowboat in the ocean and you're about to get slammed through <laughs> storms for years. You know, like that's what business is. It's, it's losing your oar and, and, you know, and, and when you really, um, when you really have a good product and you really care about your customers, you, you, you get through the storms, you know, and then you learn a bunch of stuff and all of a sudden you're in a yacht and you're like, Oh, this is my yacht. I'm doing good. Like everyone wants to be on my yacht. My business is good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, it's just, I guess the big takeaway from all of this is really, you can't uh, underestimate how important it is for you to have a target audience and know and be aware and understand truly that target audience. Absolutely. So yeah, the more you can engage with your customers' accounts, because again, like we don't want to be doing salesy. And again, like there's kind of sales gets a bad word. Ultimately, sales is good. Sales is you providing a service to your customer and helping them out. That's wonderful. But there's this idea of like the bad sales or the sneaky sales or the, you know, there's all these people trying to be in my DMs. But ultimately, when you're just engaging with your client and engaging or your, your ideal client, you're like, hey, I would love to work for this auto shop. I would love to work for this bakery. I would love to work for this coach. And you're just engaging with them and supporting them. And you you just become everyone's cheerleader. So that's my suggestion to, to business owners is be a cheerleader on Instagram, be a cheerleader on Facebook, cheerlead everyone, be supportive, be the nicest person ever. And then when they need you, they'll probably remember how nice you were. And again, if you had that messaging and you have some nice photos, I do recommend good brand photography. It's made a world of difference for me and my clients. When you get better brand photography, you cut through that noise so much faster. We resonate with beauty. So beautiful photography of you and your brand and your product is essential. That I could also say so many people don't want to get proper photography. And I really think that 
literally makes an instant almost cash increase in your business. So that's a huge tip is even if you don't know what your brand is and you don't know what branding is, talk to someone who can help you find a guide, you know, like find someone trustworthy. I'll tell you this. There are amazing and helpful people. That's my brand. Amazing. helpful. They're amazing and helpful providers in every jurisdiction and they want to help you. So find them. And, and then you, for you providers out there, get out there, make yourself visible, use Instagram, use YouTube, like get out there and be visible so that your clients can find you because we all need each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're all trying to win at the end of the day. So yeah, yeah. I love life. that. Awesome. That's a good life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much. That was all my questions. Um, yeah, I, I really appreciate uh, wow. you uh, taking the time to chat with me. I think this is really just some great knowledge and I think it'll be really useful for not only our clients, um, but for also a lot of the people who end up watching this. So thank awesome. you so much. I really do appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a great day. Awesome. All right. Thanks. You as well. Bye-bye. Aloha.